Did you know that there are thousands of nutrients found in plants and they're not fats, they're not carbs, they're not proteins, they're not even vitamins, minerals, or fiber. They are something else entirely. And that these nutrients may have positive effects on our overall health and on our brain health. Well, this is some fascinating science and it helps to explain why people who eat a diversity of whole plant type foods may have better brain health and overall health. This is the science of molecules called phytochemicals. And within this group of molecules, there is a family called polyphenols. Polyphenols are named polyphenols because of their chemical structure, but far more important than the organic chemistry is that consuming these molecules, these polyphenols, may have positive effects on our overall health and on our brain health. In this mini episode of the Get the Stuck Out podcast, we're going to cover some of the ways in which these polyphenol molecules may have positive effects on our brain health. And I'll walk you through some great examples of where you can go out and incorporate more of these molecules into your diet. I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter, and this is the Get the Stuck Out podcast. So have you ever wondered why certain foods are considered healthier than others? I mean, we certainly talk about things that are bad for us in foods like added sugars and trans fats, but we also talk about things that are good for us in foods. And as it relates to brain health, there's a lot of focus on things like B vitamins or omega-3 fats, things that tend to be found in certain foods more than other foods. Now, it's important to note that as we look at the diets, the overall diets that are most strongly associated with long-term brain health, really the evidence clusters around basically variants of the Mediterranean pattern diet. And I will admit there is a good amount of variability as far as what a Mediterranean diet actually looks like when you look at the research and the recommendations that people make. But by and large, a Mediterranean pattern diet is one that is very low in ultra processed foods and tends to contain a bunch of fruits and vegetables, some whole grains, some poultry, some fish, some olive oil, maybe a little bit of wine, nuts and seeds, and overall lower in things like red meat. Now you may have opinions on this. You may be in the camp that is very pro red meat, very pro plant, but it is the case that most of these diets that people tend to eat around the world that are associated with longevity are diets that incorporate a good amount of plant-based food in them. So when we're thinking about nutrients within plants, Again, we think about fats, carbs, proteins. These are the macronutrients. Then we think about the micronutrients. So these are things like vitamins and minerals. And as I said before, there are a wide variety of the different nutrients in those two groups that have been associated with better overall health and with better brain health. So in the fats category, we think omega-3s are maybe the best ones. The worst ones seem to be trans fats. Uh, in the carbohydrate Part of this conversation, we think about simple refined sugars as an unhealthy version of carbohydrate and something like fiber, which is good for our gut and may support the gut brain connection as a positive, good aspect of carbohydrate in our diet. In the micronutrients, we think about things like zinc and selenium and magnesium, vitamin B, vitamin D, but the next group of nutrients and where we're learning so much as it relates to some of these biochemical pathways that are being activated in our bodies and our brains are this group called phytochemicals. So what is a phytochemical? Well, basically these are molecules that are produced by plants to help a plant defend itself against environmental stressors. Because unlike you and unlike me, a plant cannot just pack up its bags and move away when things get stressful. If it's really sunny out, if it's really cold out, if it's really hot out, a plant has to create its own protection. Same thing when insects show up. A plant can't just uh, put up a moat. It has to create molecules that basically tell a bacteria, a fungus, uh, and other pathogens to stay away. The way a plant does this is through the production of these phytochemicals. And there are thousands of phytochemicals, but the best studied group of phytochemicals are these molecules called polyphenols. Polyphenols are a diverse class of molecules, it includes molecules like resveratrol and curcumin and quercetin and fisetin. These are molecules that are now being studied in humans for everything from anti-aging effects to cardiovascular benefits. 
As it relates to the brain, there are several ways in which it's thought that these molecules may be beneficial. Let's start with big picture data as it relates to why would we even think that these molecules may be beneficial to brain health? Coming back to what I had just described as it relates to the best diets for brain health, we know that people who tend to consume a Mediterranean pattern diet tend to live longer, have, again, longer lifespans, but also tend to be healthier, and their brains tend to be healthier. Why is that the case? Well, in part, it's probably due to the fact that these are people who are not consuming the standard American diet, rich in sugars, rich in ultra-processed foods. But it may also be the case that there are certain nutrients within those diets that may be beneficial to our overall health and our brain health. Polyphenols are rich in this diet because polyphenols are rich in things like olive oil, nuts and seeds, fruits and vegetables, as well as things like tea and coffee. And we'll go through a list of some of the most polyphenol dense and diverse foods at the end of this episode. So again, point number one is the diets that are most strongly associated with good long-term brain health are diets that tend to be high in polyphenols. So there's some association there as it relates to how there might be a connection between eating more polyphenols in your diet, which basically means eating more plant-based foods and better brain health. What is it that polyphenols actually do within the body and within the brain? Well, this is a part of the research that is being actively studied right now. We've often thought of polyphenols as prototypical antioxidants, meaning that they are able to decrease oxidative stress. We know that oxidative stress in the body when it's left unchecked may be contributory to things like aging and inflammation, things that we don't really want. So polyphenols have the capability to decrease oxidative stress. But that's probably only the tip of the iceberg as it relates to what these molecules do. Because we now understand that polyphenols may act on the immune system. Uh, that may be in part through the oxidative stress pathway, but it seems like it's also in part through direct effects that these molecules may have on our immune cells. So eating fruits, vegetables, tea, coffee, even wine, rich in polyphenols, may in part decrease chronic inflammation by way of these molecules' effects on the immune system and immune cells. Additionally, as it relates to what happens in the brain, we now understand that polyphenols may work on the process of neuroplasticity, which means that these molecules may affect the way that our brains wire themselves. They may have effects on molecules like brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is thought to be one of the key drivers of healthy neuroplasticity. Here we're talking about, again, a diverse range of molecules. So everything from ECGC, which is, or EGCG, which is found in green tea, to quercetin, which is found in red onions, to, as I mentioned before, curcumin, which is one of the principal polyphenols found in the spice turmeric. Each of these different polyphenols may have different effects on these different pathways that I just described. And since there are 8,000 plus polyphenols, you can imagine that the diversity of interfaces between what happens with the food that we eat, the polyphenols in that food, and what happens in our body can be pretty pronounced and pretty uh, extensive as it relates to different pathways that are activated. The last pathway that is really interesting as it relates to how these polyphenols may impact our brain health is that these polyphenols are now understood to act on the gut microbiome. You probably heard at this point all about this gut-brain connection, the idea that what happens in our GI tract is influencing what happens in our brains and vice versa. One of the ways in which this happens is by way of the gut microbiome. We've got a whole lot of really interesting preclinical data that suggests that what happens in our gut microbiome may actively influence how our brains develop. And we now understand that people who have brain issues ranging from Alzheimer's to mental health problems tend to show changes in their gut microbiome, suggesting that what happens in the gut microbiome may have direct impact on our brain function. One of the ways in which our gut microbiome is being changed by our environment is by the food that we eat. 
And what's really interesting is that polyphenols are not all that well absorbed in our GI tract. So a lot of them pass into the large intestine where they are acted upon by the gut microbiome. At this stage of digestion, the gut microbiome metabolizes these polyphenols found in our diet into new molecules. And it may be that those new metabolites, their variants of the polyphenols found in food, can actually be absorbed better than the original forms. We know that these polyphenol metabolites that are absorbed into our bloodstream may be able to pass through the blood-brain barrier and therefore influence our brain function. So point three, as it relates to how polyphenols may influence our brain health is by way of changes in the gut microbiome. Okay, so we've covered a bunch of ideas around these molecules called polyphenols, starting with the idea that one of the reasons why eating a diversity of plant-based foods may be so good for brain health is because plant foods are especially rich in these molecules called polyphenols. We've covered that these polyphenols are a key component of diets like the Mediterranean pattern diet, which is actually one of the best studied diets for long-term brain health. We've also talked about the idea that these polyphenols may act on a number of different pathways in our bodies and our brains, ranging from antioxidant pathways to immune-based pathways to changes in neuroplasticity. I should also mention here that polyphenols may act on epigenetic regulation, which means they may influence the way that our genes are being used, which is really fascinating stuff. And then finally, we talked about the idea that polyphenols may have powerful effects on the gut microbiome, that by acting on the gut microbes that sit specifically in our large intestine, that they may be able to influence the microbes and therefore the microbes can change these polyphenols into metabolites that are therefore better used by our bodies. I should also mention just on that topic that one of the additional things that these polyphenols might do to the gut microbiome is actually suppress unhealthy microbes and increase levels of what we would call healthy microbes, basically having an effect on decreasing dysbiosis and improving the overall state of the gut microbiome balance. So a lot of really interesting research there. Okay, I know I said I was going to tell you some of my favorite sources of polyphenols in your diet. One of the major themes here as it relates to how to create a diet that is good for health is to eat a diversity of real foods. That's so important. As much as we hear all these other ideas as it relates to going extreme with one diet or another, by and large, the research suggests that people who tend to have best health outcomes are people who eat a lot of real, minimally processed foods. And we now understand that a diversity of real minimally processed foods may also be important. It's important to the health of the gut microbiome. It seems like it's also important to our overall health. One of the best ways to prioritize a diversity and a large number of polyphenols in your diet is to especially eat a diversity of plant-based real foods, colorful plant foods tend to be richer in polyphenols. So look for a diversity of colors. So you get some blueberries, you get some orange peppers, you get some dark greens. These are all great sources of polyphenols. One of the richest sources of polyphenols in our diet is actually herbs and spices. So thinking about using more spices in your food is actually a great way to prioritize more polyphenols. One of the richest sources as it relates to the average person's aspect of how much polyphenols they get in their diet uh, in the American diet is actually coffee and tea. Both coffee and tea are especially fortified in a number of polyphenols, some of which have been linked specifically to better health. So some great sources here would be if you are going to drink coffee and tea, don't compromise the benefit of it by adding a bunch of sugar and putting in a bunch of things that we know are not so great for your health. If you are going to drink coffee and tea, um, certainly you can add things to it to make it taste better, but try to minimize that sugar. So coffee, both regular and decaf coffee are rich in polyphenols. Additionally, in, as it relates to tea, green tea may be one of the best sources of certain polyphenols that, as I mentioned, may have effects on a number of positive pathways in our bodies, including those antioxidant pathways that can help regulate downstream things like inflammation. 
In addition to coffee and tea, uh, olive oil is actually a rich source of polyphenols. It's also a key component of some people's representation of the Mediterranean pattern diet. If you are going to use oils in your food, it tends to be one that is richer in some of these molecules than maybe what you would find, especially in something like a vegetable oil that you would buy in the store. There's also some positive data suggesting that dark chocolate, because of its polyphenol content, may be of benefit to our health. So thinking about dark chocolate, and again, not a ton of added sugar as a source of polyphenols may make sense. Lastly, I'll just mention nuts and seeds, another great source of polyphenols. And one of the plants that I'm personally researching is called Himalayan tartary buckwheat. Compared to things like wheat, it is a much more concentrated source of polyphenols. But the high level idea here is Polyphenols are molecules found in plants that have been linked to better health and may positively impact our brain health. And you can get more and a diverse number of these polyphenols in your diet by prioritizing basically a diversity of plant-based foods. So that's the takeaway. My name is Dr. Austin Promoter, and if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing because I'm always trying to put forth great new content on brain health and overall health, and it's super helpful for me to know that you enjoy this. So also, if you have any comments, feel free to leave.